What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna go over the list collection type in Apex. We'll figure out why it's useful, when to use it, and we'll do an example together. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series today. We are gonna take a look at the list collection type in Apex. We'll figure out what it is, why it's important, when to use it, and we will build an example together uh, so that you'll hopefully feel comfortable using them by the end of this episode. But before we get into the rest of this video, make sure if you actually enjoy it to like it because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you that wanna learn about this stuff for free. So if you enjoy the video, like it now, Let's get back to the content that you came here for. All right, so what are lists? Um, Salesforce documentation and other software development uh, languages documentation define lists as an ordered collection of elements that are distinguishable by their indices, which is not particularly helpful, right? Um, at least if I read this and I had no background on a list, uh, at least this sentence itself, I wouldn't be super clear on what this means. So let's kind of go over that. If we go back to our example that we did in the last episode where we just talked about what collections are, we created this list of integers and we added three numbers to it. We added the number 12 up here, zero and one. And what it means by indices is basically the order in which they were added to this list. The only way you can distinguish one element in the list by the other is the placement based on the order in which they were put in this list. So this would be essentially indice one, this would be indice two, indice three, and so on and so forth. There is one important thing to know about lists and collections in general though. It's that they don't start at one, they all start at zero. It goes zero, one, two, three. So let me show you what I mean. If I wanted to just print out, we'll print out a few things. First thing, we'll create a debug and we will print out our list in general, right? We'll print out our numbers list so we can see the whole thing and what it looks like behind the scenes here. This is the number list like so. And then we're gonna print out system.debug. <clears throat> this is the first indice, I think. I don't know how to spell this, indice. Let's go back to the documentation. Clearly this isn't my strong suit. Indice, it's just an E at the end of it. There it is, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then we'll say numbers list zero, like so. So we can see what the first element at the first indice is in this array. Hopefully it's the number 12. All right, so we've got this set up. Let's save it. <clears throat> and then let's open up anonymous Apex here and run this guy. So collections example, oh boy. Dot integer list example. Um, and the reason that we can do this this way is because of this static keyword. Just a few episodes from now, we're gonna go over what this means uh, more, but this allows me to just call this method like so. All right, so we can see that when we print this list down here, we get the numbers 12, zero, and one. And you can see when I print out the first element in this list, I get 12 because it's the first element that got added to this list. So um, 
If I printed out one, I would get the number zero. If I printed out two, I would get the number one, which is pretty cool. So basically lists are ordered in the order that you place your individual list elements in it, right? Okay, so before we go much further, let's take a look at what this is bracket zero bracket situation is and understand it a little bit better. Um, because if you've never used a list, it might be pretty confusing and it is super important to understand what's going on here because this bracket zero bracket situation that we're gonna go over here in a little bit more detail plays into whether or not you should use a map or a set or a list when you're using a collection type. So let's check it out. If we take a couple steps back, we'll remember that a list is just a collection of elements that are ordered by their indices, or rather, they're ordered by the order in which you place them in the list. <laughs> so in our case, we have a collection of integers or a list of integers, and each time you place an element in a list, they get a, a new indice is added. So in this case, the first element we added goes to indice zero, and that's number 12. This one is indice one, which is zero, uh, which will hold the number zero. This one goes to indice number two, and it will hold the number one in that indice. And we can see that, um, you know, we've named this collection of integers or this list of integers number list. Now there has to be a way for us to access each individual element of this list. Otherwise the list wouldn't be useful really. And the way for us to access the element of the list is to say list variable name bracket indice that we'd like to access our element bracket, right? So essentially we're finding the first element in our list. In our case, that happens to be the number 12 because that's what we added first. Now you might already be thinking to yourself, maybe, this isn't a particularly great way to find an element. You know, what if, num what if I didn't know the uh, order in which I place these? Because sometimes you won't know, uh, at least not with absolute certainty and you want to find the number 12. Well, how do I know if it was added first or second or third or fifth or 20th, right? I don't in some cases. And so the fact that the only way I can find an element in, an, uh, in a list is by its indice is sometimes not particularly good, especially when your list gets super big. You could have lists up to 50,000 elements in size in, in Apex and, uh, and potentially more in certain situations. But how could I know with certainty that number 12 is, is in our first indice in some cases? Maybe it's in our 10,000th indice. There's no way of knowing for sure sometimes. And so when your lists grow in size, and when you need to find a specific value in that list quickly, or in your collection quickly, lists are not really what you should use. You should probably use a map. And we'll go over that more in the future, but in the next couple episodes. But so just so you know, um, lists are not great at finding specific elements in them right? <clears throat> and that's super important. Uh, they can be very slow at finding elements within them, especially as your lists grow bigger. So if you want to find something super quick, that's very specific, lists might not be the choice for you. You might want to go the map route. The second thing that's important to know about lists is that unlike sets and maps, you can store duplicate values in them. You kind of can store a duplicate value in, in a map, um, but I will explain that later. If you want duplicate values in your list, you, or sorry, if you want duplicate values in a collection, you should use a list, uh, not a map or a set. So 
that's super important because there are scenarios where you will have duplicate values and you can't avoid it and you don't want them to be kicked out of the your collection because they're a duplicate which they will be if you use a set or a map but with a list if you add another you know say i added another zero here it's going to be perfectly fine with this it will add as many zeros if I as I want. If I had a hundred zeros, it'll still let me add zeros, right, um, to the list. So the fact that there are duplicates is not going to scare off a list like it would with a set or a map. And so, in the case that you need them, you should probably use a list. Now that we kind of know what a list is and when you should use a list. Let's talk about the useful methods that we have available to us when we create a list like we've done here. So we obviously have this add method where we've added numbers to our list or elements to our list. They certainly don't have to be numbers. They can be any type. But what if we wanted to remove them? We could do number list dot remove. And here we have to know the exact indice of the element we want to remove. So in our case, maybe we want to remove uh, the first, uh, or sorry, the element in the number one indice. So in that case, it would be zero, right? And <clears throat> that would remove this first zero from our list and change it so that it was just 12, one, zero. So we save that and uh, run this again. <clears throat> we'll see that that's exactly what happens when we remove the element at indice one, which is this first zero. We get instead twelve one zero instead of twelve zero one zero, like we would otherwise. Um, there's also the ability to completely clear a list. So if we wanted to completely clear our list, we could say dot clear like so. And I'm gonna comment this out, otherwise it will fail because we wouldn't have anything in this zero indice spot. And if we save that and we print out our list again, it's going to have uh, nothing in it, right? It's just this these empty parentheses, as you can see here. So you have the ability to remove individual elements, which again, not the best way of removing elements. The fact that you have to pick the indice that the element is in is often uh, uh, makes it not the best choice when you want to remove things. And you also have the ability to fully clear the list as well. If you wanted to say, change, um, what the value of an element was at a particular place in your list or a particular indice in your list, you could say set, and then you could say one changes to the value 20, right? Like so, and I'm gonna remove this one. So now, instead of it being 12, zero one zero it'll be twelve twenty one zero let's just save that run it and we can see over here that it is indeed twelve twenty one zero so if you wanted to change an element within your uh, list you could do it that way and you also have the ability to do a number of other things, like you can clone your list uh, if you wanted to. Well, Auto-completed that wrong. If I wanted to clone it, I could clone this list and assign it to another list. So I could say list of integer <clears throat> clone list equals that. And you can clone your list into it. Um, and there's a handful of other things uh, as well. Like you can see whether a list, um, uh, sorry, you can get an element of your list instead of doing it like so, like I've done before down here. 
Instead, you could say dot get and pass it in zero. And it'll essentially return the exact same thing as if you did that uh, array notation down here where you say bracket zero bracket. So there's a ton of other um, methods that are available to you. And I will put these in the notes. But basically, there are a number of list methods that are available to you to make your life a little bit easier when you are dealing with lists and all the things that you might do with them. Some of these methods are used a little less frequently than others, like deep clone or equals or hash code. These are used in pretty specific scenarios, but regardless, it's useful to know that they exist, right? Because you might at some point actually need to use them. So uh, again, I'll put these in the notes and you can check them out so that you know what each and every one is used for. All right, so I think that's probably enough about lists. Again, lists are just collections of elements that are ordered in the order in which you place them in the list, right? And we call that their indice. Um, lists are good to use if you need duplicates in your list. They're not so good to use um, if you need to find a specific element in your collection quick and you need to maybe remove a specific element in your collection really quick or efficiently. Um, so um, plenty, as you'll see as we go throughout this series, you will probably use lists more than almost anything else, but uh, it is good to know when they maybe lack uh, in their uh, value, I suppose. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful and uh, I hope you've learned a bunch about lists and I will see you in the next episode where we talk about yet another collection type in Apex. Mm -hmm.